Welcome to Producing Unscripted with Joe and Biagio. YouTube enhanced version. Clickable table of contents in the description below. This episode. It's episode six, and we're talking characters. Six traits every unscripted character you pitch must have. Why being completely honest with your potential cast is crucial. How much money someone on a reality TV show can expect to make. A new way to listen to this podcast. And joke reveals why I'm jumping up and down. Music courtesy Dave Pellman Music. DavePellman.com Hey everybody, welcome to episode 6 of Producing Unscripted. She's Joke. He's Biagio. We're married, we make unscripted film and television, and want to help you do the same, hopefully by teaming up with us. Well, we've got great news. For those of you who listen on Stitcher, we are now officially available on Stitcher. I'll put a link in the show notes. You'll be able to find it at producingunscripted.com forward slash 006. And a big thank you to all of you. We were kind of shocked, honestly. Um, You have taken us to new and noteworthy, not just in film and television, not just in education, not just in arts, but we've been popping in and out of new and noteworthy across all all podcasts in all of iTunes. Um, That's because of all of you who've subscribed and left comments and messages. So thank you so much. You have no idea how much um, Biagio jumped up and down when he saw that. Okay, I did. I did. Because let's face it, (laughs) joke. Really, really, right? We thought, well, maybe no one's even going to listen to this thing. Yeah, really, we made these so that we wouldn't have to answer the same five questions over and over again. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of true. We were like, well, listen, worst case scenario, you know, we can point to people who do submit to us and say, hey, listen to these so you know how to submit shows. Um, We have been overwhelmed by how many of you have come out, subscribed, uh, and uh, supported us with comments and ratings. And now we just hope you um, start sharing some ideas with us so we can team up. Because that's the whole reason we're doing this is because we want to work with you. This guy thinks he's some kind of character. Okay, so this week we're talking characters, whether it's for a reality TV show, a documentary series, or a feature-length doc. We're going to talk about six must-have traits every unscripted TV character you pitch must have. The fastest way right now to break into the business is to find an undeniable character. You attach yourself to a character and bring that to a producer um, you know, if they're amazing television, that project will go. Having said that, here we go. Six must-have traits every unscripted TV character you pitch must have. Number one. They have to be unique. It's a very crowded place out there, and so if you are just another version of someone that's already on television, it's going to be a very hard sell. So, for example, there's lots of, you know, characters in the bounty hunting world. But dog has that market covered. So if you find someone who beats dog, then maybe you can find a place for, you know, a big bounty hunter character. But the truth of the matter is you have to find someone who's unique and who we haven't seen before. Uh, We have a show coming up that we're not allowed to talk about yet, but it's a perfect example of where a particular space was dominated by one kind of character for years. We've brought a new kind of character to that space, and that allowed us to sell that show. They're out there. That's the great thing. They come in all shapes and sizes, so keep your eyes open. Are they unique? Number two. They must bring an extraordinary perspective to the ordinary. What we mean by that is they need to have a very unique point of view. So... You know, things that you and I would go do that is very standard, like taking our car to a car wash. You know, what what will make this character's ordinary trip to a car wash extraordinary? Because of how they deal with it, because of how they interact with people. Maybe they hold court while the car's in the car wash. I don't know. But while you and I may just sit down and look at our phones or read a magazine, like this person does something different. And actually, the car wash is a great example because think about this. Jeff Lewis from Flipping Out. If he actually went to a car wash and saw somebody washing his car with the, how OCD that guy is, you know, and how, how particular he is about every little thing, he would be over there, over their shoulder, you know, all the time. On the other hand, you know, Dog the Pounty Hunter, how, how would he be at a car wash? He'd probably be on the phone, you know, talking business about catching his the latest criminal. You know, they would be two completely different stories because of the way those characters are. So let's take our True Life special, for example, uh, Secrets, Lies, and Sex, about two young African-American men living on the down low, meaning they have 
both a, a, a gay life and a straight life that they don't mix. Um, for them, you know, there's secrets there. there. There's things about either life that they don't want to share with the other. And so when they're going on Facebook or Instagram, you know, they have two different accounts. They have to they have to watch and make sure no one's leaving comments that might give away their secret life to their other life. And so for things that you and I may not even think twice about, posting a comment or, you know, load, uploading a picture, for them, you know, becomes like a very calculated move. So, so again, even in documentary series, you want to find characters that that go through ordinary things in a very extraordinary way. I think that's a great example. When social media becomes scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, number three. You really need someone that you can build trust with. The truth of the matter is that no character will get final cut, will get any say in, you know, how the show will be edited. And so, this is really about building trust with your talent and, and understanding from the very beginning what their concerns are and seeing if you'll be able to address them. It's making sure that you don't make promises you won't be able to keep because that's very important. It's it's keeping them in the loop in terms of some networks will want stuff that's a little more contrived while other networks will want true doc. So it's knowing you know, that the show, what is the show that you're going to be pitching with them so that they're aware of, you know, what can and and will be expected from them at every step of the way. And again, this is where trust comes into play. You have to have that relationship with them that they know that you, that you know what they're worried about and that you will take care of it. It's so important because your reputation is built on the shows you've done. And I'm really proud of the fact that we're still in touch with so many of the people we filmed with over the years. And the reason that we maintain those relationships and have been able to keep them is because we've been honest with them. We've delivered exactly what we told them we were going to deliver. And, you know, and we earn their trust. And a big part of the reason you have to earn trust leads to number four, right, Joke? Number four. You want characters who won't self-censor. And that's where the trust comes in. If you're able to build a trust with someone that they don't have to worry about what they're saying, that they can just be themselves, you're going to have a much better show. You're going to have a much um, richer, louder character. It, it is so important that you have characters who are not constantly thinking about what they're going to say before they say it. It's not the rhythm of real life. Everything becomes too calculated and your audience picks up on it. So you really want characters who can just be themselves, forget the cameras are there, and just say what they want to say. Yeah, and it's not because you want them to make fools of themselves. It's not like, oh, we can't have people that people that think about what they, they're going to say because we want them to look crazy on TV. It's not that at all. It's that people who don't censor themselves usually don't censor themselves because they're very comfortable in their own skin. They're who they are. They're themselves, whether they're on a TV TV show or all alone at the grocery store. They're just they're just them. These are characters who are, who like Biatra says are really comfortable with who they are and who kind of have no apologies for it. You know, the captains and deadliest catch, they are who they are. You know, the swamp people, you know, um in in the gator hunting shows, they are who they are. The mountain men, they are who they are. You know, Jeff Lewis, he is who he is. Patty Stranger, she is who she is. Not saying these people don't have some insecurities. Of course they do. But they are who they are, and they are comfortable with that. And and when we say, you know, find people who don't self-censor, you really want to find someone who who kind of knows who they are and, and is like, yeah, this is, this is me, and I make no apologies for it. All right, trait number five. They are not in it for the money, at least not at first. There, there might be a big misconception because, you know, you always read in the, in the trades or, you know, it even makes, you know, E.T. and Access Hollywood when certain reality stars and a successful, you know, fifth or sixth season get to renegotiate and, you know, make tons of money an episode. And that's great. But that, again, is in success. When a new show starts out, the network is the one who's taking a huge financial risk and putting money not only into the production of set season, but also in the promotion of that season. And so what they're asking for at that point from the talent is, listen, in success, you know, you will find other avenues to make money off of just because of we are making you a brand. But right now, when you start a season one, the people who are taking the biggest risk is the network. And therefore, 
season one is not the time where you're going to negotiate a big payday. Every network pays differently per episode. Some of them are as low as in the hundreds per episode. I mean, not even thousands. We're talking in the hundreds. Part of the reason is because reality TV and unscripted television has sort of a legacy of launching people and businesses into the stratosphere when a show is successful. You know, we've had the Bethany Frankels of the world, um, you know, even NeNe Leakes from, you know, Housewives. She's now acting on shows like Glee. So, you know, I mean, look at the Kardashians. You know, yes, they were already, you know, wealthy and therefore they probably commanded a nice amount starting out. But the business, you know, empire that they've built since then because of the show is, you know, outrageous. You know, the girls next door from the Playboy Club. Networks know these days they're aware that by spending millions in advertising on a show, what they're really doing is making the characters on the show superstars. So a network's a, you know, point of view is, look, I'm spending the money to make you a star. I'm not going to pay you a bunch of money on top of that. You go and use your fame to make yourself a millionaire. The network is still taking the risk on the first season. This show may not go, it may not it may not get anybody anything, and then who's who's you know, who's got a loss there, and that's really the network who took a huge financial hit on that on that show. Because there's just as many shows that never went anywhere and you wouldn't recognize those people walking down the street. You have to find someone who is realistic enough, and this might be a conversation you you need to have, or a conversation that we're more than happy to have with uh, you know, whatever piece of talent you want to bring to us. But again, it's that money comes only in success. The main point here is you, if you find a piece of talent who wants to do television just because they think they're going to be rich, they have to understand that is not from the get-go. <laughs> they have to actually first become a success before that money will follow. Our final point that we want to discuss, point number six. The characters need to fit somewhere on the TV landscape. And this is a really big one and a very heartbreaking one because we have been in this position where we find great, amazing characters with great stories in a great world. We love it. We show it all around. Everybody, every network loves it, except nobody buys it because it's not right for them at that time. You might have a, a terrific character who everybody who meets is like, wow, that is the biggest character I ever met. But because he's 95 years old, there's no one that's going to put him on TV as a star of a show right now. Sometimes it's age. You know, a network will be like, oh, you know, we're actually trying to hit the 20-year-olds and you have a 40-year-old character. And, you know, the world that they're playing in doesn't really play for the audience for the networks that have the 40-year-old audiences. So again, sometimes it, it's just not the right time, not the right place for a certain character. But, you know, it's it, that's the shot that, you know, you have to be willing to take. And that's the part also where we can help you out with. Uh, if you bring us a great piece of talent and, you know, you hit one through five and we can tell you, you know what, this is the right time to take this character out into the marketplace or, you know, what, it's just, it's not, it's not. Great. So... To wrap things up, six must-have traits of every unscripted TV character you pitch. One, they need to be unique. Two, they need to bring an extraordinary perspective to the ordinary. Three, they need to be someone you can build trust with. Four, they don't self-censor themselves because they feel comfortable in their own skin. Five, they're not in it for the money, at least not at first. And six, they fit somewhere on the TV landscape. Whew! That was a pretty uh, that was a pretty in depth episode there, Joke. It is, and it's so super important. I mean, these are things that we learned the hard way. Um, but you really, the bar has been set so high right now to, in today's marketplace for characters that you know someone that you could have sold a TV show with five years ago just it, it won't get anyone to bite. And uh, before you run out and shoot a bunch of tape and you know start trying to spend all your money on someone you find that are some great characters, make sure you start a dialogue with us. How do you do that? It couldn't be easier. Go on over to producingunscripted.com slash newsletter. Sign up for our newsletter. That has directions on how you can go ahead and get a submission agreement and start a dialogue with us. So hopefully you'll connect with us soon and, uh, you know, let's go sell some shows together already. I want to meet the characters you know in your lives. So get them over to us. Uh, until next time, please head on over and subscribe at producingunscripted.com slash iTunes. Leave us a rating and a review if you like what we're doing, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. See you then. Producing Unscripted with Joe and Biagio.